Good evening, everyone. It's Monday evening, August 10th, approximately 10.30 at night, and I'm Cesar Rondina, and this is my this week's version of The Author's Pen, which is my weekly blog. Um, usually on the second Monday of every month, I do a video blog post. I have been remiss and haven't done that for about three months. Um, we've had to make many changes with the onset of this pandemic. Um, uh, my next book release uh, from the Axe Diaries, my new PI series, Trapped in Revenge, was due to uh, be released in, in May, and I've kind of put that off till the fall. And right now, just kind of monitoring uh, what's going on with this pandemic. Um, because frankly, right, right now, uh, whenever an author publishes a book, you want to make sure the timing is right, the mood is right. Uh, and so on and so forth. And right now, in, in my opinion, I just think now is not the right time. Um, but that book will be released. Um, but anyway, in the summertime, I normally don't do any writing. This is when I enjoy boating, uh, enjoy doing a lot of boat captaining work. And this week, this summer has been very busy for me. I've had the opportunity to captain some beautiful boats this year and meet some outstanding people. And, and it's it's been a it's been a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, practicing social distancing, wearing masks, and taking all the necessary precautions for disinfecting and so on and so forth. These things are all important. Uh, regardless of what you hear and all the various opinions you hear, depending on the news stations you watch and whatever doctors are their contributors, you know, you're hearing such conflicting stories that give you a lot of confusion. But I, I can tell you this after having a 32 year career in medicine that the basics of washing your hands, wearing a mask, disinfecting properly, and social distancing is the key to um, getting this thing under control for everybody else as well as in your personal life. So uh, now that things have kind of quieted down for me a little bit, now uh, I want to get back to doing my video blog post. I've said this on many occasions. I like doing this because it gives more of a personal connection between me, uh, the subscribers to my blogs, and those people that read and buy my books. So the topic for tonight, uh, which I thought was a good idea and it was a suggestion was to talk about courage and fear and believe me when I when I say this 95 percent of the topics that I discuss come from my the subscribers to my blog or readers of my books and you know on my website you can email me with any suggestions or topics you would like to see me talk about uh, I'm very fortunate to have lived the type of life that I've had a diversity of being a business owner a firefighter a paramedic and well-versed in, in many, many, many subjects based on my did didactic education and life experience. So feel free to send your suggestions. And I do eventually get to all of them, but believe me when I tell you, I easily get 50 or 60 suggested topics a week. So, you know, it might take me a little time to get to yours. So anyway, let's, let's talk a little bit about courage and fear because how that applies to our daily lives um, is, is so important. And a lot of times we don't really realize it because what we do with our courage and fear is really a subconscious reaction. So I want to give you a little bit of medical basis behind it first. Uh, and I'm not going to get very technical because I don't want to confuse you. But these are terms that you've probably heard in your life before. We all have a nervous system. We all know this. The two main parts, though, to the autonomic nervous system, autonomic meaning it's automatic, and this is innate to us, it's from birth, we can't control it, and it happens automatically, is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the one, and another term you've probably heard, is what controls our fight or flight syndrome. So when we're threatened with something, what makes us stay and fight, or what, what makes us turn and run? Whereas the parasympathetic nervous system is, let's put it this way, it's the more calm. It, it's the more relaxing part of our nervous system that allows us to relax. Some people have more of a heightened sympathetic nervous system versus a parasympathetic nervous system. This is why a lot of times this ties into a person's behavior where some people can't relax, they're very hyper. Um, because everything in our body interacts with each other. And when we have this balance in our body, that's referred to as homeostasis. So that's the quick 30, 30 second version. Uh, and this is why you see some people when they're faced with a threat 
And I don't necessarily mean a physical threat. It could be a verbal threat. You know, how many times have you ever been called to the boss's office and what happens? You get all nervous. You get, you might even get a little sweaty. Your mouth gets very dry. You might be the type of person that can't speak in public. When I first started doing public speaking, I have to tell you, I was nervous as hell. You know, I, my mouth would get really dry. I would be very jittery. And after a while of doing it, it just became second nature. So I feel very re relaxed with it. But that's your parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system kicking in because it, it creates a lot of hormones. You know, your pupils dilate, your um, a semblance of being aware, being aware of your surroundings gets very, very heightened. Um, and again, this causes increased respiration, increased heart rate, your blood pressure goes up. There's a lot of changes that happen in your body. Yet, some people when faced with this type of threat are just very calm. So they don't have a heightened sympathetic nervous system. So what does this all mean, okay? And how does this all tie into what's going on in the world today? Because let's, look, let's call a spade a spade. We're about as confused as a society as we could possibly be. We are surrounded with different media networks that uh, are very left, very right. Uh, they're very biased in their reporting. Um, and, and I've written this in my written blogs before, but I really want to state this very, very clearly. In today's world of video editing, uh, a candidate or somebody could do a speech, a video clip or whatever, and that clip could be edited, uh, parts could be pulled out to show just the point that someone wants you to believe. So what, what do you believe? How do you know what to believe? You know, you have to make sure that you read things and watch things from verified sources. Now, personally, I could give a damn less whether you're a Democrat or a Republican. I could care less whether you want to vote for Trump, whether you want to vote for, for Biden. This is not a political blog post this week. This is talking about how having the courage versus the fear to face what we deal with. First is the pandemic. I've been grocery shopping and I will see people literally look like they're doing a, a like they're a horse doing a home stretch in a race to get away from other people because they're so afraid of catching something now I get it and, and I'm okay with that um, but again you have to reach this point in in your mind of what you're going to be afraid of and what you're going to fear and what you're going to accept and know that whatever precautions you're taking, you are comfortable with. Um, and it's very confusing because, again, depending on which media network you listen to and depending on which doctors that support that particular media network's view they have on as guests, we are constantly hit with information that is just confusing the hell out of the world. Um, and us as a society. Same thing with all the protests, what's, what's going on. Who's calling something a um, peaceful protest? Who's calling it a violent protest? You know what? Use your common sense. The bottom line is, if somebody's burning something, if someone's destroying something, if someone's hurting someone, that's violent. And don't even try and convince me that that's peaceful because anybody with a brain on their in, in their head and a, and a head on their shoulders is knows the difference between violence and peace so you know what don't always believe what you hear and use your own common sense you're a lot smarter than you give yourself credit for um now some people say that these people that do this is they're very very courageous well, part of courage is definitely standing up for what you believe in and stating that verbally or through your protests or through your actions or through your deeds. And that is a very courageous thing because when you look at a crowd of 100 people, uh, I will guarantee you something. If you take that one outspoken person, you pull them out in a crowd and put them in a park all by themselves and they don't have a hundred people behind them yelling and screaming and backing up what they're saying, they're probably not going to say a damn thing. All right. So are they really courageous? Okay. Or are they caught up in the moment? Oftentimes a lot of people that chime in with this stuff 
are they really violent or are they caught up in the moment? So what does this all lead to? This leads to a massive state of confusion. And that's what we have going on now. Let's talk about Portland very, very quickly. All right. Absolutely absurd. Absolutely ridiculous. Take the politics out of it. I don't give a damn whether the, whether the mayor is Democrat or Republican. Any city leader in his right or her right mind would never let something go on for 40, 50, 60, 70 days. You know, you want to blame the, the, the federal uh, agent's presence and use that as an excuse. Well, when they pulled back, why didn't the violence stop? So now they're just taking that violence and they're putting it towards trying to burn a police department down or destroy a police precinct. Um, and now you have police presence. You've given these people what they want, but yet they're not stopping. All right. Well, again, these aren't peaceful protesters. And that is not courage. Do not confuse that with courage. And that's why I wanted to talk about courage and fear. Because courage is a leader who's going to stand up, speak their mind, and try to precip precipitate change in the proper way. That's a courageous individual. Someone who's doing it the right way. Not someone who's doing it in the form of violence and destroying people's property that never did a darn thing to them. Fear is, an, is, is, is kind of the opposite of that. You know, we had that couple that was standing in front of their house with, with guns because they feared that their life or their property is, was in danger. Um, now, whether, you, and again, I'm not staying, saying it is right or wrong. I'm not giving you an opinion on it. You can form your own opinions, all right? But that is the result of fear. They had a legit, legitimate fear, and that's the method they chose to try and protect themselves. So, as you can see, and the point I'm trying to bring across by bringing up that as an example, is the line between courage and fear is very, very thin. Some people may say they took that action because they were afraid. Other people might say they were very courageous. All right? You don't know how people are going to react and why. However, I will say this, all right? Another person's actions are strongly going to dictate someone else's reactions. And that's what we need to understand. And that's what's going on in the world today. If I take an action against you or anybody else, I need to understand that that's going to elicit some form of reaction from you. Okay? Depending on what action I take is going to be very determinant to, uh, on, on the reaction that you're going to take in response to my action. So courage and fear is not black and white. All right. There's a very thin line between the two and it all depends on how you're going to interpret it. For me, in, in closing this up, when I define courage and fear for myself, I say many, many times there's very few things I fear, and it's the truth. What's the one thing that we all fear the most? I don't think there's a person in the world that doesn't fear death to some degree. If I fear something, I try and understand what about it I fear. What is, the, what is it about this subject matter I'm thinking of that makes me afraid? And the one thing I do know about fear that I've learned, because trust me, I've been in some very, very tight spots in my life uh, and have been in situations where, quite frankly, I thought I was going to die or probably should be dead. But obviously, I'm here talking to you, so that didn't happen. And, and that is to be able to break down your fear, understand it, and learn as much as you can about it. That is not going to eliminate all your fear. I use death as an example because everybody's afraid of it. There's certain things that we don't know. You might take solace in death when, when it comes to your faith and your belief in uh, w w whatever religious belief that you follow. But the thing is, if you don't understand your fear, you can't overcome it. If you don't face your fear, you can't overcome it. So if you're afraid of something, 
but yet you face it, isn't that courageous? Think about that. So my point is, courage and fear are not black and white. It's a very thin line, and it all depends on who's interpreting it. Just understand that anything you're afraid of, you need to learn about, research about, because and face it, because that's how you're going to overcome it. And in closing, let me refer to uh, the pandemic that we're in. Are we all afraid of it? Are there those that might be in a high-risk bracket? Uh, they're elderly. They have underlying medical conditions. Yeah, they're going to be afraid of it, okay? And rightfully so. But where their courage comes in is when they take the precautions to stay safe from it. Hygiene, social distancing, wearing a mask. These are all things. You don't have to stay hunkered in your house like a hermit. You just have to take the precautions. And that is how you display your courage in a situation like that. Um, listen, any questions or comments, please feel free to e email me. You know, the subject of this goes much, much deeper, but I'm just trying to give you in a blog a quick little overview of it, how I see it, how I view it. Um, for those of you that may have issues with it, this maybe gives you a little different way of looking at it. And although our nervous system is automatic, it's innate to us, innate to us from our, our birth, we are what we are, we can control it, okay? And that control comes from within. Like everything else you do in your life, you have control of your life and what you do with it is how you implement, implement that control. With that, stay safe, be well, and uh, again, feel free to subscribe to, to our blog. And like I said, I, I write a blog every single week. The second week in a month will now be my video blog posts, and feel free to send any suggestions. Have a great day, and be well. Good night.